When you buy something on credit, when you get through with it, look how much you pay for. And I just told you how I did the houses. I did the watch the same way, Rolex watch the same way. I got it wholesale and I kept it about 11 years and I got $6,000 for it. Paid like $1,100 for it. Always a businessman. Well, that's what I learned from Donald Trump. Barry Strong, Norman Whitfield, every morning drop his mom off to Hudson's, went to Belle Isle, Three Pigeons, used it in his song, I Wish It Would Rain. He told this to you, D-Town Records, talked about how he got started with the music in the jukebox Atlanta High Five. Norman Whitfield, every morning he would bring his mother to work at Hudson. Oh, he had a nice car, big car, and you know, Black didn't have that, you know. She worked at the Hudson, at Hudson building, Hudson. a stone's throw from where Monroe Music was. Right. Everybody come downtown, that was Hudson was the main spot. That was the largest department store in the world for a time. They were so nice, and for Christmas and everything, everybody went there, you oh, know. Man. But see, black people, when they came down, there's always somebody over the line. A lot of people wouldn't go to Hudson because they would go to Hot Sam. They go to Sam. There's a place on Broadway, East of Mark was up there. But I used to go up there and have carrot juice. Because hmm. I like fresh stuff, fruit and stuff like that. Yeah. It's where the library up in that area it used to be at East of Mark. on Broadway up in there. Black people go there and go to Sam, not on Monroe and Grassy for Citizen Liquor. Okay. Okay, that was Hot Sam. But what Citizen Liquor is? A big store there. They went to the whole block. When I closed my store, I put records in there on consignment for them. I sold my records out of there. Black people hang there and they hang on Cunningham and Kinsinger on Michigan where the hot dog place is. Michigan and Lafayette. Because people were poor and they hadn't integrated yet every place. There were a few like where I was. I was one of the first black who took cash. One minute back, you took the cash for make a sale. You gave it to the owner. They rang it up and gave you the king. You gave it back to it. I didn't do that way. I rang up from the beginning. I had keys to the place from the beginning. The police, the alarm go off any night. They called me. They didn't call Miss Keywell. I would want to go down any night. Get up out of my sleep and go down and think somebody breaking in the snow. The alarm went off. Accidental whatever, whatever. I had to go. Because the police, first thing they going to do is call somebody. Sounds like you ran the store. She owned it, but you ran it. From the beginning. From the beginning. I said that. From the beginning. From the beginning, the police, see, they call me first, and I go down there. I have gone down there at night, and the police come there and put a gun on me. It was a security guard and the police. They didn't, because they saw me in there. I'm black. What you doing in here? You, ain't supposed, you understand what I'm trying to say? Because, and then I had a seizure debit permit. I had a license for that, too. Like I tell you what the police did. That was very unusual back then, too. That's what I'm saying. Not a lot of people had those, let alone That's black people. That's what I'm saying. I had an American Express card. I remember I went on Broadway and said, Broadway Clothing. Guy named Richard, he owned the place at the time. He said he was working down when I came down there. He owned a bar, restaurant on Six Mile. It was called Dummy George. Dummy George, a big black restaurant that sold steak in it. Only one in Detroit. Dummy George likes to call, but it's owned by black at the time. Richard was working at Broadway Clothes. In fact, he lived at 1300 Lafayette here when they first had 1300 Lafayette. And he wore suits and ties. Every day, I get rid of this real quick. That's all right. Can okay. call me any minute? I'll keep here. Let me cue okay. you into that again. I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, I'll read yeah, all yeah. this again. Barry Strong, Norman Whitfield, right. every morning drop his mother off at the Hudson building. Then he would visit with you at Monroe's Music. Then he'd go over to Belle Isle with Three Pigeons. He used it in one of his songs, The Sounds of the Pigeons, the song, I Wish It Would Rain. He told you, Mr. Lee Kennedy, about this. He asked you about it. He asked your advice. D Town Records talked about how he got started started with the music in the jukebox Atlanta High Five. Norman Woodfield, like I was saying, he would come to the store because he just killing time. He would drive out, he would park illegally and come in the store and stand there by the door. I guess I go out there and sit in the car and we talk. He was writing this song about I wish it was rain. He left me and he went to Bel Air. He came back from Bel Air. He called me to the car again. I go out there and hear this tape recorder. He played it for me. It was pity go creaking. And he showed me what he was doing. <laughs> and I laughed at it. When this record came out, those are the pitching that he put in that record. And I remember when he went to Bell Island takes it because he came back and played it for me and told me what he's going to do. And when the tune came out, of course I like it. I love that song. I love the temptation in anything they did. But uh, I just didn't, you know, when I'm out booging, I'm sure I like the temptation. But when I'm just myself like that, I'm more or less like jazz. You know what I'm saying? Partying, sure. That's it. your go to music is jazz. Right. And Barry's. Strong was his co-writer. Now my ex-wife and Barry Strong was friends. They know each other well. I've always been around somebody who was connected to somebody who's always connected to somebody in everything. I remember when Martha Reed came out with a song. There was a guy he was writing with a paper down there. I don't remember his name. When Martha Reed started out, he used to come in the store all the time. And he told me that they was going to put dancing in the street out. 
And he used to tell me about that all the time. And we had heard her then. I didn't get with Dancing Street because it wasn't my thing. But I just never knew. But showing up, Dancing Street came out and it was a monster. Dancing Street was a monster and it's been done. And he talked about that all the time. And Eddie Jefferson, I just jumped to Eddie Jefferson. When Eddie Jefferson got killed, he came in from Chicago that day. And he came in on a bus. He came in the store. He asked me how could he take a bus to Dex to a baker's keyboard. And I told him how he could get over there. And he got killed that night. You were one of the last asked people to speak to him before he died. Yeah, that evening. It came by that evening because the bus station right behind my store. So he walked in my store. I don't remember Eddie Jefferson never coming there before, but he came in like he knew where he was going. But I probably used to follow him, you know, Moody Moody for Love, that kind of thing. And Roy Brooke played drum. They were all Kenny Cox played piano. My wife at the time, they was all good friends. They hung out together, Kenny Cox, because Kenny Cox played piano. He was playing with Ella Jones when he was 19, I think he was 19. Anyway, she came out with Don't Go to Strangers. She came out with an album on Prestige Lake when it was unusual, and Kenny Cox was playing piano. He was in the store all the time. She came in town. She took him back with her. We got to be real good friends, but Kenny passed on. Hmm. Uh-huh. And he was a big jazz legend in Detroit. Everybody know Kenny Cox. We had my Kenny. We played with some of his Roy Brooks. Eddie Jefferson, that was a jazz band. You know, Kenny Cox was around for a long time from the people from Wayne State and Deep Down Records. It was formed by Pete Hall, Mike Hank, Roger Brown. Roger Brown would play with Detroit Lions at the time. He was a, I forget what position he played. He was a big heavy dude guy. The guy we straight with the L.A. Uh, what's it? it was a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. They were all in business together. Roger Brown, like I heard he was in Chicago, Milwaukee. I don't know what happened to those guys. But everybody that was anybody, they used to come in the store. One time or another because like I said the store where you bought records for a record store was Land High Five they was on Grand River and the Boulevard then they moved downtown right where the library is right wait where, it was called Atlanta High Five it was called Land of High Five oh Land L-A-N-D <laughs> I thought it was Atlanta High Five no, in land, Detroit. No, L-A-N-D. It might have been L-A-N-D-S. I'm not sure. It's Lands or Land. Of High Five. Of High Five. That's what was the name of it. High Five? Like a High Five or High well, Five? Like High, high Fidelity. Five in the studio? High Fidelity. Well, that's yeah. what, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, but I'm just making sure I'm yeah, completely I understand. understanding I'm not sure. it since but, I misunderstood you know, it at first. <laughs> I just hear people pronounce it. Do you understand what I'm saying? They just said land a high five. No, I don't know what it's high five. Or, they just said land a high five. I hey, didn't shop there. Hey, high five. I don't know what that a five. I don't know. But you know, we have broken language, whatever you could call it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're right. I never seen it because I didn't shop there. I had my own store. But I know where it was. They moved downtown there across from me. I maybe went there once or twice. I remember seeing the lady one time because I want to see what she looked like. You know, we spy on each other too. <laughs> you know, I be standing outside. Well, how many people they got in there? Oh, she got five people. I don't have no what's wrong. You know, that's the way we did people. I go to Little Green, see how many people got, how many people walk through the door in an hour. You know, he got 50 people and I got 19. What's wrong with that? I got to get more people. You're a marketing maven. Well, that's what I'm saying. When I moved, got a new store someplace, before I designed the lease, I'm going to go out there. At least that's what I did do. I had two stores. I see how many people walk down the street an hour. I want to know what foot traffic I got. What days and what time the foot traffic is there. It's not there at the same time all day. It might be 8 to 9, you go over at 10 o'clock. What you, <laughs> everybody done gone by. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, you keep track of things. 